Brothers Studios at Monash University by popular demand, a show that features the latest and greatest emerging performers and songwriters to come from the Sir Cohen School of Music and Performance. And to introduce these incredible artists by popular demand, our host, Annie Louie. Hello, I'm comedian Annie Louie, and I'm so excited to be bringing you this new live music TV show by popular demand, filmed right here at my old stomping grounds of Monash University. There's so much crossover between comedy and music, and live performance is one of them. I'll be getting inside the minds of some of the musicians right here on this very couch in the digital hub recording studio. It's always once you leave that they build the cool stuff, huh? We've got everything from country, R&B, pop blues and rock. And we're calling it season one because hopefully it'll skyrocket into something massive. We're launching the careers of 12 young artists in their final year of studying popular music. We'll be showcasing their amazing songs and musical talents so you can say you discovered them first. We've also got a roving reporter slash paparazzo lurking in the corridors, ready to launch into some interviews with the artists before or after their performances. It's the one and only Sammy Murphy. Sam, what's going on right now? Well, Annie, it's taken almost two days and a team of dedicated makeup professionals, but I am finally camera ready and approved for daytime broadcasting. I'm here on the ground at the Sir Zelman Cowan School of Music at Monash University, and I'm looking to get up close and personal with the talent here this afternoon. We've got musicians, we've got camera crew, we've got sound engineers. There are so many students working across so many different parts of this production. It is guaranteed to be an absolute treat over the next couple of episodes. I am going to go and see if I can hunt down my first victim and get a little bit more of the scoop on what's happening on the ground. Thanks, Sam. We've got a cracking first act for you who's originally from East Gippsland. Now she's made it to the big smoke and her tracks are solid gold. Please give it up for Misty Harlow with Gold Fever. Down at the crossroads, down on your knees, look at up at the sky, there's something in the breeze, it comes. Blowing through the southern trees. In 1879, on the outskirts of town, where fortune and hidden as rubies gleaming in the ground, there's a legend we heard. That gold will be found In the mud and the blood Still in bread, rum and booze And nobody around here Has a thing to lose and Missing mama's mother
was Misty Harlow with Gold Fever, and I gotta say, I am hooked after just one listen. Honestly, I think she should write the next James Bond theme song. As we wait for Misty to join us on the couch for a chat, let me tell you a bit about By Popular Demand. As I mentioned, the students are in their final semester and ready to receive their Bachelor of Music. But it's even bigger than that. Behind the scenes are popular music students from all year levels who make up the crew and do all the hard work to make the stars like me shine. Speaking of stars, another one is about to come into my orbit. Here's Misty. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the couch. Hi, Annie. How was it for you being in the performance space, recording your first track for TV for the first time? It was a lot of things, but it was really fun and it was everything was new. So it was a bit nerve wracking, but we really enjoyed it. Yeah. And you, it wasn't just you. It was with your band as well. Tell me yes. about how you formed the band so yeah it's five of us um and I formed them through my recital that I had at the start of the year um which was I think it was 13 of us wow all on stage and then I kind of picked the best one <laughs> yeah and just exactly stole them. yeah yeah so um kind of got the best of the best and um yeah, so they're my band and I love them. So the lyrics that you had for Gold Fever, where did you get the inspiration for that? Yeah, so I wrote that song for my recital um, and I really wanted to get a glimpse into part of the Australian history of the gold rush. And I wrote it about the gold rush in Victoria. Um, so it was really fun kind of reading lots of history books mm. and talking to my grandparents and finding wow. out stories and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's quite a research song. Yeah, that's awesome. My family actually came during the gold rush era, so I feel like this is like a cool collaboration no. we've got here. Our ancestors would be proud, I think. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about the country music scene in Australia, because I didn't know about it until I started listening to your music. Okay. Um, well, I kind of got into country music not that long ago um so i'm kind of exploring it myself um i think by just writing country music and going to see like country music gigs in melbourne like there's quite a scene for it um and also americana is quite big in melbourne um i think that's how you explore it more and just like applying to country venues like um i'm playing at tamworth next year, which is like the biggest country yeah, music festival yeah. in Australia. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of discovery, I think. And how did you get into it to begin with? Was there someone who inspired um, you to take this up? Well, I grew up regionally. Um, so there was always Johnny Cash playing and a bit of Linda Ronstadt and Slim Dusty. Mm. Um, so that was always kind of playing in the background. And then I grew up and I had a lot of different influences um like I lived up in northern New South Wales where I did learned about reggae and like just listen to different music so then I think I did a bit of a circle back and now it's kind of like all the songs from when I was really young I'm now like creating yeah that's amazing mm. um let's talk fashion for a second because mm -hmm. I think the outfits that I've seen are amazing like I love this look for you how do you curate your wardrobe um, well, I look at, like, other artists that I like, um, but it's kind of an ongoing journey because, yeah, it's a little bit difficult to sometimes find what you really like and what works for you, but, yeah, this, this is a bit of a solid outfit. I wear this yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a two-piece. Yeah. But, oh, no, I thought it was a it jumpsuit because I love a jumpsuit. Just, yeah. I mean, going to the toilet's a bit hard, but, like, the mm. look, it's just, like, utility. I'm getting stuff done. Yeah, it is. Do you go a lot of vintage shopping? Yeah, I go up shopping a lot. Mm. Probably more than I should. No, that's good. I think it's very sustainable. So, yeah, do more of that. Yeah. Um, if you've got one fashion tip for people, what would it be? I would say comfort. you got to be comfortable in what you wear, especially if you're performing. Mm. Yeah. That's good. Ali Wong says you got to wear um, stable shoes. Like, it's all about the footwear. So you got to be grounded. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she wears the, like, the flats. Yeah, <laughs> so hard agree. We're on the same page yeah. there. Awesome. Yeah. And cowboy boots. Oh, of course. If you have cowboy boots, that's always a good oh, addition. How high do they go? Wow. <laughs> Look at mm. that. Look at the length it's on that. That's, all, <laughs> that's amazing. 
<laughs> uh, thank you so much for giving so much of yourself, revealing um, your footwear for us. Uh, all the best with the studio recordings that you've got coming up. Thanks, Annie. All right, let's check in with Sam now. Who have you got with you? Annie, I have managed to grab one of our camera operators and stick him on the other side of the lens for the time being. I'm here with Brendan Boyle. How are you, Brendan? I'm pretty good. So, Brendan, you're in the first year of the popular music course here at Monash, same as me. Um, you're our voice major, but you have decided to jump on the production crew for this program. Do you want to tell us a little bit about why you decided to make the switch? Well, yeah, so for the past couple of years, I've mainly just been producing in my little bedroom studio, and it, was, it wasn't it was live, so it's a very different experience when I move here, and everything's being done live, and I'm like, oh, I want to see what it's like to be behind the scenes there instead. And tell me, what sort of behind-the-scenes stuff have you managed to get your hands into? I know you've uh, on the cameras for this next performance, but uh, are there any other areas of production that you've managed to work on? Yeah, so we get to be behind the soundboard to uh, EQ all the instruments, and we also get to work on the lighting that happens on stage. Cool. So you're going to be pretty much a production all-rounder by the end of this program? Yeah, I'm going to be a man with many hats. Excellent. Well, we'd better let you get back behind the camera where you're supposed to be, because we are about to welcome our next performer. We'll go back to you in the studio, Annie. The next track we're going to hear is a little haunting and has a beautiful sense of longing that comes through. I've stalked her Instagram and the comments say things like smoothest, softest, sweetest voice to ever exist. I could listen to you sing all day and give us more. So, all right, all right, it's okay. We're going to give it to you now. Please just stop yelling. Here's Marie with Hope Where It Hurts. Something different on your stir, baby. Do you still love me? And it's a hard thing to request, but could you please hold me? Parts of me know that it's fate. There's no separating And if we could escape the trenches And wait a minute Could you see something that's worth saving? Cause I
That got me right in the feels. That was Marie with Hope Where It Hurts. Joining me now on the couch is another artist, Melody Kin from the band Spicy Milk, who are just chilling because they're the last performance on tonight. So Mel, how are you going? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. Are you excited? Nervous? Feeling very spicy. I'm excited. Oh, spicy. Mm -hmm. That's a great lead in to my first question, which is how did you come up with Spicy Milk, the band name? Because that is an amazing <laughs> name. Yeah. Um, well, Mitch and I, we kind of wanted something a little bit silly because that's kind of who we are as people. There's actually a... Um, a list of notes that I found on my phone the other day of like possible names. Yes. And one of them, my my second favorite was Smelly Shoe. But I'm, I'm glad. glad. Yeah. <laughs> glad we didn't go with that one. We would try it. And now, um, from the band Smelly Shoe, it's Mel. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't really hit. No, yeah. Not as I much. was thinking, I've been drinking a lot of spicy milk drinks mm. recently, mm -hmm. like a lot of cinnamon, mm. a lot of like turmeric. Chives. Yeah, and like yeah. that just makes me think when I think of your band name, like, you know, cozy, like warm. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, do you get that a lot or is this news to you? <laughs> no, that's kind of new. That's nice. That's a nice yeah. yeah, yeah. The other alternative was the maybe like those memes that make fun of people who can't handle spice. Like, I oh, milk, say, it's too spicy. For yeah, me. more of a meme for sure. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, I'm in your headspace now we can uh, proceed um, so I wanted to know a little bit about your background with music because I've heard that it's helped you like heal from a lot of different things in mm. your life like mm. tell me about that for sure um, I kind of got into music a lot more recently I did a bachelor in um, graphic design and then I decided to do music because I always wanted to but was scared mm. um, and that's actually where I met Mitch. I was doing my own solo stuff and I wrote a song called Better, Healing From My Ex, classic. Mm. Um, and that's where I met Mitch and then we started doing our own music from there. Oh, great. And I've seen that you describe your music as soul funk that mm. makes you want to break up with your shitty boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So is that related <laughs> to the same life experience? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm super into like self-development and learning from mistakes like exes yeah um, <laughs> I'm with you. but yeah the stuff with Mitch I guess spicy milk is a bit more um silly definitely still that same kind of sass um but yeah a bit more fun oriented yeah and have you got an album in the works what are you working on right now yeah um with spicy milk we've got some singles that are lined up to be released um and then with my own stuff um, definitely an EP happening mm, coming up. Awesome. Yeah. When I listen to the track, it's got a lot of really sexy bass in there. Mm, mm -hmm. Did you write that, or do you have a bassist who's like, I'm no, gonna put this? No, we've got a we've got a sexy bassist, mm. Ethan Kalusi. He's yeah. a legend. So yeah, he kind of. Um, I think some of it was written by Mitch, but a lot of it is um, from Ethan's yeah, it's a big collaboration brain. of everybody for yeah. sure. So yeah. if you could describe like the mood that you want your music to create, what would it be? Mm. Um. I guess fun, feel good, um, and a little bit chaotic. Mm, chaotic. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I like that. Very mysterious. <laughs> That's why we've left the best till last. Don't tell the other acts that. Do you have a routine that you follow when you're in the space before you go on? Um, no, that's something I definitely would like to do, though. Because, um, yeah, performance anxiety is a massive thing for me. Um, but honestly, I think lately something's shifted. I think it's just because I've performed a lot more now. I'm starting to feel more comfy yeah. and like caring less about what other people are seeing or thinking. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think a pre-show ritual would be good mm. for me. Yeah. Maybe take a sip of 
a spicy milk or something. Yeah, simple and spicy milk. I think milk's not good for vocals. <laughs> that's the no, one thing. Not. I, yeah, it's terrible. Don't do not. that. Yeah. <laughs> but the spice probably not terrible. Probably not terrible. Maybe yeah. not chilli. I think that's bad for vocals Yeah, as no, well. you don't want to be pooping on stage. No, don't do that. No. Yeah, this is, that's, we're going to pull this quote and this is going to go all over <laughs> social media. <laughs> Um, I saw that you performed recently at the Gasso. Mm. How did that go? That was awesome. Yeah, that was my first um, solo show, um, just as me, just as Melody Kin, which was really fun. Because um, obviously I love working with Mitch, but it's not 100% my stuff. Um, so, yeah, Melody Kin is a lot more about, like, healing and, um, yeah, finding self-worth and growing. So, mm. yeah, it was really fun. And it was great to hear feedback that people felt like a sense of healing and um, they felt whole after watching my show, wow, which was really yeah. nice. I feel like you have a lot of wisdom beyond your years because how old are you? I'm 58. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> What's your skin routine though? It looks amazing. Um, yeah, no, I'm very, I'm super focused on um, like digging up childhood traumas and mm. analysing it. I think I find it really, really interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say that that's a big focus of my life. What's one big realisation that you've come to recently that you can share with us? Well, I grew up in Taiwan, which probably already sounds really wow. traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, that's different. How did you end up there? My dad's Taiwanese. Oh. Yeah, so um, I guess just, like, being a mixed child in Taiwan where there's... Except for the cities, there's not really anyone who's not Taiwanese. That was hard. Um, so, yeah, just having to be different and look different. Yeah, that's one thing that relates directly to my music, like how I carry myself, how I present myself on stage. Um, it's massive. So that's something I'm still working through for sure. Like, mm. there's just so much to it. But, um, yeah, all the childhood things... Yeah, I having that up. outsider perspective is really good though because I used to, people used to say I was weird but I took mm. it on as a compliment because mm. I didn't want to be like everybody else. Right. And like I think if my brain thought the same way as everyone else I wouldn't get any material out of it. Sure, There'd be no jokes. Yeah. So you kind of can sit back and observe and like know that, you know, that makes you special. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There is something, yeah, really special about like um, being grateful for where you are even for all the, like, scary things that have happened to you. Yeah. Wow, this turned into a really deep motivational <laughs> talk. Uh, thank you for joining me on the couch, Thank Mel, you, thank and you. And I'll let you go get ready for what I'm going to call the headline set. So, chookers for that. Thank you. And now, over to Sam, who's still in the corridor, because we've locked the doors to the centre and they can't leave. So, who have you got with you now? Annie, I've managed to catch a genuine musician here in the wings at the Performance Theatre. I'm with Mr Josh Bolt. How are you, Josh? I'm good, Sam. How are you? I am never better. Now, Josh, you're about to jump on stage and serenade us with some original material. Is that right? Yeah, looking forward to it. It's going to be good. Can you tell us the name of the song you're about to show us? It's called Start Again, and it's about being an occasional insomniac. Just an occasional one, not a full-time insomniac, just, just part-time. Uh, but this isn't actually the last we see of you, is it? You are on stage again next week with mm -hmm. your band, Cupid in Denim. Yep, that's right. My ego knows no bounds. I had to be across two episodes. <laughs> well, it's the music industry. We're all about big egos here. But it does sound like you're actually more of a team player. You get to solo in the limelight as Josh Bolt, but you do get the opportunity to collaborate with some other pretty talented musicians here, yeah? Uh, yeah, absolutely right. Very, very lucky. We've got an amazing, amazing breadth of talent here and the Monash popular music course. Well, we'd better let you go and spread your incredible breadth of talent on the stage. Uh, you go down there and you get ready. Uh, it's all yours, Annie. We'll see you soon. So, here's the perfect song to listen to if you wake up at 3am and you need some nighttime listening. It's Josh Bolt with Start Again. Endless streams of words pool inside my head Just like water when it cools And falls upon the dead I don't know what is easier Cause living's kinda cruel But in this fucked up world We're all pretend And playing by the rules And I know it's hard Cause I don't know why or when But 
I've been up since three and it's half past ten. I don't know when it started, but I just really hope it ends. Convinced myself it's healthy, and then I told that to my friends. But in actual fact, I feel alone in the dark. And when I wonder why it gets me, well, my mind, it falls apart, so I back down. But just don't wait up for me Maybe this ends By the time I'm 23 And I'm convinced I'll start again And so I try not to keep my eyes wide open Wondering somehow if my mind is broken And I wandered through it all I keep breathing But it's so conceited And I'm convinced I'll start again I'll start again That was Start Again by Josh Bolt. What a beautiful falsetto at the end there, just teasing us. Look at me talking in music terms. Can you tell? I played the violin and piano for most of my life, like a good Asian kid. Anyway, enough about me. Popular music has been around for seven years at Monash, which means there's no shortage of talented alumni taking over the music scene here in Australia and abroad. And they all started their journey right here. And one of those people is a soul funk queen who just returned from playing shows in the UK and even appeared on Spicks and Specs. It's the incredible Emma Vollard. Hey. Hello. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining me on the couch. I love this outfit. Thank the, you. The first question I want to ask you is about the colour orange because it's such an iconic colour. Now you've employed it as part of your brand. What's that all about? Oh, that's a good question. I haven't really thought too much about it, but... I think it kind of originally came from the idea of like fluidity and fluidity in gender and I guess life and I wanted it to kind of capture that because yeah. it's the in-between yellow and red. Yes, that's good. Some people don't know that when you mix colours together, uh, that red and yellow makes orange. We did but learn that in primary I know, school. People forget. People do. And you had a lovely album cover where you went and grabbed a lot of orange things and sewed them onto your jacket. Yeah. Is that, did you do that yourself? I did that with my partner, Jake. Oh, amazing. Yeah, a little bit of a home job. Yes. I actually had a photo shoot myself with a bunch of orange objects. I had to spray really? paint. I feel like we need I to. I did that too. That's yeah, exactly we need to what like I did. combine collections. Maybe we then... need to do a joint like That's photo right. shoot together. Yeah. Let's talk about your album, Deity, which just yeah. got released, mm. and that's what the photo shoots were for. How's it all going? And tell me about the process of making that album. It's been great. It was very cathartic because I feel like during lockdown, which was when I started to get into the nitty-gritty of it, I really had a lot of time to think about what was going on in the world, obviously, but also kind of what was going on internally because we had so much time. I yeah. feel like we just kind of sat at home and fought a lot so for me it was just like writing down all of those thoughts and materializing it into songs so for me it was yeah, yeah it was a really mm. cathartic experience and, and it was great because I got to hang out with all of my friends and record oh great and you got to record it after the pandemic yeah. you had, yeah, to, I had wait. to wait yeah. yeah I waited and then we booked in a, a studio in Phillip Island which was really fun mm. and we did five days there and just smashed it all out I had like two months to write I just I set myself a goal Mm. Two months, yeah. write it, and then go record it. I'm really impressed by the range that you've got because I listened to the song Femininity and then I found the song Breathe and they're so 
different in style and yeah. I feel like that's like awesome there's something for everybody yeah totally I guess for me it's just about the music that I'm listening to at the time and kind of the emotion that I want to put out into the song yeah. so brief the song is about my sister Adelaide and she has a disability. I don't normally like to talk mm. about it because I feel like it's, there's a lot of stigma behind disability. Yeah. But the song is all about her and her resilience and courage and positivity. Mm. She always has such a positive outlook on life. And because she's nonverbal, for me, I find that I'll never take for granted communication and the ability to express mm. myself. And that's a whole... That's the whole reason I really do music and that yeah. I use my voice. Oh, that's awesome. Does she enjoy the things that you produce and Sometimes. you show them? Yeah. Not all the time. She actually really likes Linkin Park. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So I don't really fit into that realm. But she 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 enjoys it and yeah. she knows when the song's about her and I think oh, that's it's so beautiful. special. And she loves music. That's like her remedy mm. in life. I did want to ask you about Spicks and Specs oh, too please. because that, you know, has gotten a huge amount of um, fans it's got I watched the video on your Facebook page and is that like I mean I didn't think that the song um, that you sang could get any better already but then I, I'm like this oh, you like the song it's good like total eclipse of the heart like great song already oh, it's right not, it's, but, not, it's not my favorite song <laughs> it was a really good challenge though because I obviously do the kind of like the soul jazz fusiony like generally it's got any it could be any style that I end up Fusing mm. with jazz. And what's next for you? What are you going to do in terms of, are you touring? Where can we find you? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, at the moment, I'm just getting back into writing. I want to write my first EP. I've only done an album. So I'm going to record an EP and I've got a few festivals throughout summer. Mm -hmm. Just keep doing the thing, yeah. you know, and keep yeah. writing. Great. I love that. That's a solid plan. So if people want to check you out, head to... Emma Volard Music on Instagram and Facebook. Beautiful. Thanks so much, Emma. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. So we've come to the last act for now. There are more episodes still to come, so make sure you binge them all online on YouTube and follow your favourite acts on socials. All of them will be playing live gigs at some point, so support live performance, including comedy. <laughs> and get out there. Thanks for joining me on By Popular Demand. Now, please enjoy this smooth, sexy R&B to get you in the mood for whatever it is you're doing next. The track is called Cosmic Energy by Spicy Milk. I'm Annie Louie, and I'll see you again soon. <laughs> Bad.